uh, we will enter now deeply in the topic. As I told you, how to organize and classify your different books according to the activity. What does it mean? If you are selling uh, FMB franchise, cafe, restaurant, or if you are selling clothes, the organization of your books won't be the same. Meaning that for <coughs> FMB business, you will have a specific book for the recipes, fish technique, and a specific book or joint book with recipes about hygiene, the health regulation and the health rules that you have to, to comply when you produce food. <coughs> so this is the two uh, specificities of the food and beverage business, hygiene and the specification to create a recipe that you have to, to follow, for sure, very strictly. Uh, so according to the activity, FMB and other business, and according to the culture of the country, I mean, uh, as I told you, you cannot give an operation manual of 1,000 pages to perhaps a franchisee in Saudi Arabia. I mean, people here, they, they, it's more uh, personal relation, trustful relation. Uh, you can uh, provide with a book of 1,000 pages, but it's not sure that it will be read. Because at the end, when you transfer an operation manual, it has to be written. If it's not, uh, it's useless, you know. You don't give a book just to give a book. It's a tool. You have to use this tool. If this tool is not used, it's a nonsense. I mean, by law, you are covered. I gave you the operation manual. <coughs> But uh, it's not a decor element. You have to go into it. It's very important to be compliant you know, with the lo local rules and regulations. Ah. Compliance with local rules yeah. is, is uh, I would like to say, uh, this is the job of your lawyer. I mean, we were tackling this issue with uh, Fatima. Uh, in Europe and in America, you have specific regulations for uh, franchising. In this area, you don't have, but still you have a commercial law which is applicable. I mean, you know what we say in law, you don't have a law with, with the instruments that you have, you, you can solve any issue. If you don't have a franchising law, you have commercial law. And normally, commercial law in the region is enough developed to tackle any issue. I mean, uh, except if in a country, franchising is forbidden, but I think it is not the case. In any country in the region, franchising is allowed. You have the right either to be a franchisor or to be a franchisee. So as soon or as it is not banned by the, the, the positive law and regulation, you have the right to take a franchise. After, you have some specification. Partnership, wakil, sponsor, <laughs> regulation for residence, working permit. Okay, this is another story. But in the region, we could say that the countries are friendly for franchising. And you can see in all the malls that you will visit. Uh, yesterday I was in city center. Uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you have uh, franchises everywhere, you know. So I would like to say that uh, people love franchise uh, here as everybody in, uh, in other places in the world, you know. People, they understood that acquiring a franchise or creating a franchise is the best way to leverage their business. This is uh, the rule. Okay? Uh, let's start into the operation manual. <coughs> As I told you, you will organize your uh, books according certain themes. You know? Let's say that you know how is uh, 
equivalent to ingredients to make a recipe. Okay, you have all your ingredients on the table. You have to sort it out to make package. Why? For your brain. I cannot give you 1,000 pages and to tell you uh, there is everything in it. Uh, you have to find it now. You know, it doesn't work like that. It's a scientific, this is a scientific method of thinking. I mean, you observe things, you link things, you create rules, and you create categories. It's a scientific method. Huh? When you, the way that you organize an operation manual is not, uh, again, uh, artistic way or decoration. There is a logic. You have to organize your operation manuals on the best way to make it the easiest to be used by your franchisee. <coughs> Starting from this statement, and perhaps I will disappoint you, there is no rule. There is no rule. Uh, I mean, you cannot tell me I have the way to organize uh, the books for my franchise and this, it is the best way. No, at all. There is no. The best way for you is not perhaps the best way for her. It has to be customized. But you have fundamentals. I mean, you can customize your books organization and split and spread. <coughs> but you have fundamentals which are uh, on, the, on the screen. What I propose you and you will discuss it. Book one, General Manuel Operator, is a general description of all the elements which are constituting the know-how. This is a generic formula, you know, because you can tell me the know-how, it's all the operation manual and it's everything. Because when you have a franchise, everything is a part of the concept. <clears throat> Let's say that this book, according to me, is a book which is aimed at presenting the brand, presenting the staff, presenting the history, presenting the competitive advantage, presenting the vision, presenting the mission. Excuse me, you can bring me water, please? Two, two if you have. Oh. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So this first book, you know, and it has to be very well done because this is a first book. Always make a good impression from the beginning. First book, tell me a story. Tell me a story. I will explain you that on Thursday. Uh, tell me your story. When did it start? How did you get the idea? You were in your bath, you get up, I want to create a franchise. Make me dream. People, they are fed up now with everything. They are depressed. They are sad. Situation is not good in the region, in the world. War, terrorism, economic crisis, blah, 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 blah. Make me dream. You want to send me a franchise? Make me dream. Tell me a story. I want a story. In this field, Americans are the best. They are the best in the world. Yes. Uh, they invented Hollywood, that's not... Uh, even if cinema was invented by French people, I mean, the Lumiere brother at the beginning, but they took over and they invented Hollywood. I mean, you have to tell a story when you sell a franchise. This is fundamental. And most of the time, this part of the, of the brand, we call it uh, storytelling, uh, by the way, storytelling. I mean, articulation between the content, you know, in, in, in a brand you have, just to, to introduce you for the, the module on Thursday, a brand is divided into three parts. You have what we call expression. Expression, it's all the visual aspect of the brand, all what you see related to the brand. Decor, design, product, website, manual operators, even the people. 
We call it expression, okay? One. You have three, I shift to three directly, I will explain you why. We have content. Content, what is it? This, these are the values that are incorporated in the brand. Because a brand is as a person. A brand has dresses, has clothes, has a physical appearance, it has a brain with idea, with political idea, with religious idea, with uh, artistic ideas, with familial uh, ideas, with national ideas. A brand is like a person. Values. I mean, if I speak about uh, Coca-Cola, according to you, what is the values which are represented by Coca-Cola? Just uh, as a small exercise. Values. If I'm telling you Coca-Cola, what are the values, according to you, incorporated in the brand? Think to the logos, to the mascot, to the uh, signage, to the... Uh, the small, uh, the most small text that there was under the brand name a few years ago. What did they say? Coca-Cola. Yes. So value of what? Pleasure. Pleasure is a value. What else? Think positive. I think. A few years ago. Think positive. I think there was uh, this uh, slogan, think positive. Coca-Cola is representing what? America, American dream, freedom, friendship, universality. Yes, sports, it's linked to sports, etc., etc. I mean, with a brand you have expression, so the visual. As a person, think about a person, visual, closes, physical appearance, you have content, what is in my mind, a brand has a mind, she has values, and the articulation between the expression and the content is the storytelling. This is the story. I mean, the story will link the expression of the brand to the content. This point is most of the time neglected when you have a franchise, when you, acquire, when you acquire a franchise or when you want to set up a franchise. The storytelling, tell me the story, tell me a story. You want to create your franchise tomorrow, tell me a story. Don't tell me, okay, I decided in... Uh, Bonjour. Don't tell me I decided to create, you know, you want to make, you want to sell me your franchise. Okay? You want to sell me your franchise. You come and you say, okay, I decided to create a franchise 20 years ago. It's not, uh, nothing original. Okay? I wanted to create a franchise. Uh, you can say, oh, okay, to make money, to make money quicker. No. You have to make People dream. You have to explain them. You have to invent. This is a story. You can invent. Since I was, you know, to tell you the truth, one week ago a friend of mine is uh, in Barcelona. He created a company who is specialized in making inventories. He is outsourcer of inventories. I mean, you have a company, you want to make your inventory, don't do it yourself. You call him. He comes to make the inventory at your place. Okay. He called me from Barcelona. He told me, Nicola, I created my website. I send you the, the sample of my website. <coughs> I want your advice. He said, okay, send it to me. So inventory, the scope of the business is inventory. It's not too sexy, you know, inventory. It's not, or can you make people dream with inventory? It's not easy. You know, it's technical, you know, you came with a, a screening machine, you know, RFID, you know, to make your stock. 
He sent me his website. I told him uh, Edouard, his name is Edouard. I told him Edouard, uh, it's weak. I told him why weak? Storytelling. I decided to create my company six months ago. You don't make me dream. I told him, how come? I told him, find pictures when you were a child, counting stones on the beach, and tell a story starting from that. Since I was a child, I was obsessed by counting things. Stones, when I was a child, my shirt when I was a teenager, my uh, sneakers, and always I was counting. Tell a story about counting and finish by inventory. Tell a story, even with very technical field of business. I mean, the inventory, you know, it's not uh, difficult to make people dream. You can make people dream with chocolate and flowers, okay. <laughs> no, no, but frankly, there is something. Flowers, wedding, events, uh, you can attract people, but you are telling me I am a specialist in inventories with RFID, with my scanner. It's not easy. You have to find a story, invent a story. Ask your friends, ask your wife, ask your children. I want to tell a story about inventory. I gave him this lead. He told me, he, came, he called me back, he told me, Nicole, it's great. I found. And I will do <laughs> what you told me. I will tell a story since I was a child. I was obsessed by counting things. Stones and blah, blah, and blah, blah. And to tell a story. Even it, if it is fake and false, you don't care. This is marketing. No, this is marketing. Since I was a child, I was counting the stones on the beach with my parents. I evolved and now at 30 years old, uh, I want to count inventory. I am obsessed by inventory. Tell a story. Some uh, businesses, for sure, as I repeat, are more uh, accessible to this way of thinking. Fashion, FMB, you know, FMB, you, are, you have a concept from Italy, from any country, you're from America, from, you can make people uh, dream with food, you know. When you eat food, you, 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 you participate to a lifestyle. You go to eat in P.F. Chang, you have a certain uh, experience, you have what we call a retail experience. So with food, it's easy. With decoration... Did you say F&B, food and beverage? Yeah, yes, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, I <laughs> so, you know, food is very attracting. Fashion, because fashion, the way of your dress is a uh, lifestyle. Uh, decoration, accessories. Luxuries. Luxuries, it's the uh, biggest thing. When you buy a Bulgari a ring, uh, it's a story. You, the brand is telling you a story, and the brand chooses you as, uh, because you're the best. This is uh, in terms of value. Okay, when you buy a lux luxury industry is really specific regarding this uh, issue. I mean, when you buy a Louis Vuitton bag, <coughs> 2,000 euros, it didn't cost for sure 2,000 euros. You have in luxury industry big margin, about 10 or more than 10 as coefficient. But you buy a symbolic value, okay? You buy a symbolic value. So if you like symbolic value, brands, which are legitimate because of their history, their origin, blah, 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 blah. They are able to, to send you the symbolic values that you want. Example, <coughs> the difference between, uh, it's a case study that I had in uh, America once I attended a seminar. You know the Touareg of Volkswagen? Touareg. Yes, Touareg, the four-wheel drive. Yeah. Touareg, Touareg. Huh? An Arabic Ah, Touareg. <laughs> You have the Touareg, four-wheel drive, and you have the Porsche Cayenne. I give you the prices in euro. Huh? Uh, in, in, in France, the Touareg, it's 40,000 euro. Okay? The Porsche Cayenne, it's 60,000 euro. Believe it or not, the, the cars are made in the same factory. <coughs> it's Volkswagen, huh? the VAJ group. I mean, they have the same platform, the same chassis, uh, same factory, huh? uh, same chain. They use the same chain to assemble together the different piece. But what is the difference? Why there is 20,000 
euros difference between a four-wheel drive Touareg and a four-wheel drive Porsche Cayenne? The name. Brand name. Brand name. Meaning, if you drive a Touareg or if you drive a Porsche Cayenne, what is the perception you, as an observator of someone who is driving a Porsche Cayenne and someone who is driving a uh, uh, Touareg? So, but what concretely, what do you think? <coughs> uh, more. I would like to say yes, but uh, you know the four-wheel drive to our egg is very well designed, yes. by the way. Yes? So, the class, what do you price, mean? The price is high, so it's more, like, more luxury or more... Uh, okay. Value and perception, I think. Alors, so first of all... Brand, all of that goes back, goes back to the brand. Value, value of the thing. Yeah. The, the value okay. of you are driving the car, what people will think of you. Voilà. Ah, voilà. So, I mean, I have a Touareg. I, I am successful in business. I have a Porsche Cayenne. I am very successful in business. <laughs> the very is uh, it's totally different. It's totally different. You are successful, okay. And I can show it to you. Look at my Touareg. No, 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 no. It, it, it's, no, no, it's, it's all wide. This is worldwide. This is worldwide. 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 So, you have a Porsche Cayenne? I am very successful. So, we call it in branding, and I will enter into this uh, Thursday. Uh, this is symbolic value. You have functional value. I mean, a car originally is aimed at carrying you from one point A to another point B. Okay, this is a function of a car. It's to pick you up, to transport you, functional value. And you have the symbolic value. The functional value for a Touareg or for a Porsche Cayenne is the same, huh? The same. You can reach any point as soon as you have uh, petrol, fuel in your, in your tank. But the symbolic value is not the same. I revert back to this book. The storytelling that you will mention in the first book is very important because it will give you legitimacy, legitimacy and the image. Uh, we will see that also brand image, brand positioning, brand image, brand positioning and brand identity. You know, it's a triangle because there is a triangle. Huh? The brand positioning, where I want to put my brand. Porsche Cayenne is, I want to put my brand. Luxury, it's a luxury car. Brand image. It's also very important when you, when you give the, uh, like the Porsche or the Cayenne, you are giving to a franchise somewhere. And then it should be in a good hand because if they don't deal with the people in a nice way, Yes, but service, you know, to be frank with you, service, you know, when you deal with this kind of, uh, of items, I mean, you sell a Porsche or you sell a Vuitton bags, okay, you can, you can wait for a very good service, it's clear, but you know, there was a big problem in Hermès in Paris with uh, the famous uh, black TV presenter, what's the name, what's her name? Onfray, yeah. Onfray, what's the name? Uh, uh, Yes, a very... Opera, opera. Opera, voilà. She went to Hermès. So she is a millionaire, famous TV speaker. She went to Hermès in Paris. Choose one bag, but she had to wait five minutes. So wait, madame, stay here. I am with someone. She tweeted, oh, Hermès is a bad brand, and blah, blah, and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Still Hermès. Don't care. <laughs> they don't care. Even here, we do have, you know, a little problem with the BMW and with Mercedes, but it's still people. The brand is so strong. Yeah, very strong. The brand, when the brand is strong, when you have a strong brand identity, and it's your job as franchisor to create, through the expression, the storytelling, and the content, a strong brand identity. When the brand identity is strong, first of all, you will get the trust of the customer directly. 
You will sell more. Yes, it will carry more. Uh, yes, the yes, and so brand image, brand positioning. Where do you want to put your brand? Tomorrow you are a franchisor. Create a concept. Where do you want to position your brand? You want to be mass market, to be medium, to be uh, affordable luxury, to be luxury, to, to be uh, ma mass uh, minus, mass plus. So the positioning has to be studied very well. I mean, when you create a brand, and positioning it's easy to, 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 to remember. Where do you want to put your brand? You want to put it here or here? Or here, which level? You have to think about that. What is your positioning? Comparing to competitors, for sure. Okay, what is your positioning? Uh, brand image, the perception of the people of your brand, which can be different. Because you can think that you are premium brand. Okay, I'm here. And in fact, you are here. You think that your brand, you think that you have a certain brand positioning, but in fact, your brand image, I mean the perception of the people, doesn't match. So this is worst. So before franchising. But, uh, for a lot of franchises, I don't know, I want to get your opinion. Um, so, you know, the franchise in the original country might be, might have a certain perception. But uh, in another country, you might have another. So let's say, for example, McDonald's. McDonald's in the States, you know, cheap. Uh, it's relatively cheaper food, cheap burgers, 99 cents. You're right. $1.99 to get a good deal. But say, I mean, in developing countries, McDonald's is actually for the rich. Interesting. I can give you the same example with Paul. Yes. If you know Paul, yes. which is a real success story in the region. If you go in France, Paul, you, you don't go to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I never go to Paul when I am in France. Yeah. So, this is different. I mean, Paul, as McDo, they came here. There was an upgrade from the master franchisee here. I mean, they changed a little bit the concept, to be frank. Because if you see Paul here, it's not Paul in France. And, and after, just one minute, and after that, the, the perception is totally different. I mean, as Paul is a premium brand here for French cafe, it is not at all in France, but at all, at all. Why? <coughs> Why? Because in France you have a bake. <coughs> you have a bake. <coughs> <coughs> because in France you have a bakery each 50 meters. Yes. So, depending on the market, it can be very strong here, because here, Paul, uh, to be frank, as no competitors, only competitors is Brioche Doré and Eric Kaiser and a few. But they are leader. Why? There was, there was a first mover advantage. They came the first in 15 day, uh, years ago. And there's not a real competition. So for sure you have to adapt. You know? And for sure the brand positioning is changing according to the countries. And also to the, I mean, to the lifestyle. Like now, lifestyle change to the healthy, so McDonald's is not very healthy. Yes, it can be a question of conjuncture also. Uh, uh, you're right, now the, 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 the fashion is uh, biological and diet and blah blah and blah blah. Yes. So when you sell burgers with uh, 500 calories per uh, sandwich. Mm -hmm. But this is a structure. But now, McDo, because, and I linked again to innovation, McDo now, you, you have light meal in McDo. Because McDo, uh, yes, because McDo, they, they, they saw the threat. They said, well, we have to be careful because now the, we are, now the target we are, is the, the, the burger. After the movie, you know, they started just, you know, building a healthy uh, style. Directly, they, and when, when, yes, the movie of, uh, exactly, they, they, they decided to, and you know, the, the cleverness of a brand, of a franchise. Yeah. They saw the threat, they said, whoa, 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 we have to... We will still sell burgers with 800 calories. Yeah. We don't have to communicate too much on this. So salads yes. and yeah. quinoa and uh, water and uh, zero fat uh, ice cream. And so they saw the threat. So again, it's a proof of cleverness. And as a franchise, you have to be careful because you never know. 
improvement, but yes, in, case, in this case, McDo, it's a reaction, it's not an improvement. Yeah. Yeah. It's a reaction, okay? So reaction means... Uh, the idea uh, they, they, they saw, because you have strategists, you know, yes. McDonald's, they saw, say, oh, la, 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 today it's, be careful to the burger, perhaps tomorrow it will be, uh, the burger is forbidden. And now, you know, in America, you have a big fight with lobbying about sugar, about uh, all this stuff. In France, they wanted, they created a special tax on sodas, for instance. Yeah. From, from obesity, to fight obesity, etc. So, you have, to, you have to be careful, but once again, you have to adapt. As a franchisor, you have to adapt yourself. It's linked to innovation, to adaptation. Don't think that as a franchisor, you have your concept, it's 2015, and uh, you say, okay, for 10 years, I am uh, quiet, I am uh, okay, no improvement, no. You have to see the competition, you have to see the evolution of trends. Now you have the big uh, trends about veggie, for instance. There was diet, but now there is veggie. Perhaps tomorrow, to, I know that in France, for instance, they say that uh, there is one new uh, veggie restaurant opening in Paris each week. It's veggie. Yeah. They want to put veggie meals in schools now, in France. There's an idea, you know. So you have the... Uh, the market is changing, and you as a franchisor, you have to, to observe. Lifestyle. If you, lifestyle, and if you, if you still keep on selling burgers, and uh, once you will see that and, uh, all the competitors, they sell uh, quinoa and salads, uh, there will be a problem for you, you know, you will be rejected from the market. Mm -hmm. So, never neglect the first book. Book one, storytelling, introduce the brand, experience, history, Tell me a story. This is a very important. And believe me, <laughs> all the books I saw, they, they neglect this aspect. Okay, we create a brand, we create a franchise, we decided to franchise. And you have people who are specialized for that. Huh? Storytelling, you have agencies. Huh? Oh, yeah. You have agencies, you have advertising agencies. You can, uh, tell me a story. I, uh, I open a French restaurant, uh, I want a story. Tell me a story, invent a story. With my name, with another name. But you have, you have really to focus on that because the story, the story is impacting the brains of people. If I tell you uh, I decided to create my own restaurant one year ago, if I tell you since I was a kid, I was cooking with my mother, with my grandmother, uh, and I was fond of cooking. And uh, I, I studied banking, but still I had the idea to open a French restaurant. And once I got the opportunity to open a French restaurant, I opened a French restaurant. Which story will you remind her? Cooking with his baby. You, you will remind the nice story. He was child, he was cooking with his grandmother. His mother he already got the idea to cook. Make people dream. By the way, if you go to, on Google, you can see many things. Huh? You have examples, you have tutorials. Yeah, true stories. The best is the true story, but the difficulty with the true story, I tell you the truth, yes. it's become too much true. <laughs> too much is true. Yeah. Yes. Because after people, they will. Because people. People that who have uh, false stories will be succeed because I think they have to have a passion for your business. No. You have to close. Yeah, yes, but 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 but, the, but yes, but the but people. Let's fake it until you make it. But this is not. The no, way. but to be frank with you, uh, when you come to a restaurant, uh, I know famous example. When there is a story or storytelling. You won't, at the end of your meal, ask the waiter and telling, is it the right story or how did it start? And after a while, while I keep telling and telling, then you forgot, it's not true. Yeah, yeah. People say, <laughs> is, it, is it true? Is it not? <laughs> you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Is it true that you you, you put an old picture where you were, you or a child is cooking in black and white with uh, old people and your mother. And I have a believer, I have a very strong believer, 
tout à fait. Donc ça, this is very important. Create a story, uh, and, and believe me, people, they won't ask you. Is it a true story? Is it you on the pictures? I saw pictures in black and white. Is it you at five years old? Yeah, I, think, I think we have a story, it's the real one, but we need a good writer to write it. Ah, you're right. It's a different thing. Okay. I, I don't want to believe that I have to lie because... No, but the question is, you're right, is the way of storytell yes. is because you have, a, you have nice story, normal stories, bad stories, and you can make from a normal stories a great story. It's a, it's a DNA, it's a DNA of the brand. You know the storytelling, well, I come back. Storytelling linked to expression <coughs> and to values. I mean, the, the storytelling, you know, this is the, the source, you know, that you put in a recipe to link everything. So, the storytelling, if you don't have, and most of the time, me, as expert, I, I, I focus on that and I remark that most of the brand they don't, have, they don't have a nice and a substantial storytelling. And, uh, and when you skip this step, when you focus only on expression and on content, something is missing. You can have a very nice brand in terms of expression, physical. You can have very nice values. But what is the link? Make the link between both of those elements. Make the link, link it. Tell a story to link the expression and the content. You can, for, for coffee, for instance, Mr. Abdullah, you, you can write very nice stories for coffee, for yes, instance. Okay. Trip and uh, South America and here, even because coffee was invented in this area, by the way, in Saudi Arabia, in Ethiopia. You, you can, you, you, can, you can make, I didn't see his website, I don't know, but you, you, can, you can make something very nice. With coffee is typical uh, business where you can write very nice stories. Uh, luxury also, I mean uh, decoration, event and food, you can write nice things, you know. But in any, anyway, in any business, you always can find a window, as we say in France, you can find a window to, to develop. As I told you, even my friend, he has a company to make inventories. I told him to tell a story since you were a child. You can't you can do it. And this is a big difference. You, you, you and I linked also to differentiation, what we were speaking about previously. As a franchise, you have to be different. You have to be different. Okay, you have the first mover advantage. I mean, you are the first one to enter the market, perhaps you, uh, Nawal. Okay, you are here for 20 years or 30 years. It's, it will be more difficult for someone to, to beat you starting today. Okay, we know that. You have the first mover advantage. But still, there is competition and there is differentiation. I mean, uh, if you master, if you can realize in your company, that differentiation is a key issue. According to me, you cannot fail. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. Because again, again, differentiation is linked to innovation. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Disruption will be more innovative, use better technology, and then they will just be trying to avoid you competing with, and then you will feel that you will be leading and moving ahead. Not for me, and the competition is very healthy. I always look at the competition that it gives me a push to go across. Yes, exactly. And, and when you are, anyway, you know, I was speaking with a man a few days ago in Lebanon. He has a great idea, he started implementing it. And uh, uh, he, he is already uh, duplicated. I mean, there is already someone that yeah. came behind him. Normal, in France, the same, America, the same. You have always people. 
following you. So me, Nicola, how oh, can I do? He's, he's doing the same things as me. He's, I told him, you're afraid? You're afraid? You have the first mover advantage. You were on the market one year before him. So you're afraid? Okay, it will duplicate you. Your website, your uh, service, your invent, you will upgrade, update, innovate. innovate yeah. It's not innovation, it's not for one time. I innovate and Allah uh, je m'en vais. I go back home. No, <laughs> you have people and I will explain you. Thursday, how to organize in your companies what we call innovation sessions. I mean, in your company, and I attended a seminar in, uh, in America, in Texas, about this issue. Uh, you have to take, you know, the, the last afternoon of the week. Uh, yeah, I think it's a Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon yeah. Give you a tip. Uh, the last afternoon of the week, Thursday afternoon, the productivity of your employees is close to zero. Okay? Yeah, for sure. Thursday afternoon, starting 12 people, they, they think about the weekend. Exactly. Okay? It's the start for me. It's always easy. You know? It's a start for me. They, you know? Yeah. So, people, they start about the weekend. Use those three or four hours to organize innovation sessions. I will explain you how to do it. Okay, you have in your company to foster innovation. You can use those few hours once a month, once uh, twice a month to brainstorm, to bring people together and to foster innovation. Why? Because innovation is not the issue of one person. Innovation is for everybody in the company, even the doorkeeper. Even the cleaner. Even the cleaner, he can give you an idea. No, innovation, innovation stations organized in your company. I would like to say it's uh, roughly free, huh? because the four hours at the end of the week, uh, zero. Huh? Productivity is zero, close to zero. So use those three hours, 12 to 3 o'clock, we organize an innovation session. What could we invent? What could we renovate? And take all the ideas and forget the cost. The cost is second step. <laughs> what could we do? Packaging, service, Instagram, Facebook, dress, uh, sales technique, decoration, uh, packaging, mixed product, mixed services, marketing, uh, storytelling, website, whatever you want. Be innovative. Book one. Book two, <coughs> very important. It's what we call, you could call it in project management, the work breakdown structure. I mean, it's a retro planning. Retro planning, what does it mean? You sign the agreement, you sign the franchise agreement, the 1st of December 2015. 2015, okay, you sign the agreement, sign and pay for sure, franchise fees. Starting, starting the signature of the franchising agreement and the payment, you have what we call a retro planning. I mean, now, each day, you have the work breakdown structure. What do I have to do? Since opening between the signature till the opening you have to break down all what will have to be done within this period by activity I have to get the design of the shop I have to get the specification of the shop at the same time, I must place the inventory order. For a restaurant, I mean all the mercurial. The number of spoons, of plates, of uh, 
of dishes of whatever you want of machines of blah blah so kitchen etc 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 noting that you can do multitasking multitasking sometimes I mean you can start to recruit people and to draw the design of your shop but others cannot be done uh, simultaneously I mean yes alors you, you have a good uh, I will give you uh, also uh, advice you know uh, Windows uh, project management you know Windows Windows project management this is uh, the name eh? yes. project yes. Windows project it's very nice Microsoft Office project. yes MS office project yes. Yes. Uh, okay you have uh, what we call <coughs> the, work, uh, the work breakdown structure and you have what we call the Gantt diagram you know what is a Gantt diagram Gantt Gantt, Gantt chart diagram okay. sure. Gantt chart or Gantt diagram you know you have the work breakdown structure and the dates the dates and you have charts Milestones. as soon as it is uh, implemented and done you have colors and you have charts it's, it's, it's a project management, huh? but create a franchise is a project management, by the way. <coughs> you can use this, this element. Uh, you, you must have clearly with your team, one week after you sign the agreement, you, you must have your schedule. I have to order the products from uh, France. I have to buy the plates. I have to hire people. I have to send two people to train. I have to get the layout from the franchisor. After that, I have to take the tenant manual from the mall. I have to, to appoint an architect in the country to follow up. Uh, I have to perhaps uh, reshape the uniforms from the employees. I have to set up a menu. I have to, have, I have to make tests for the menu, to make tests. Uh, I have to start the marketing. What will be the launching ceremony? What will I do? I will invite the press people, the big players, my friends, a network. I have perhaps to invite, uh, through an advertising agency, uh, leaders. Leaders, I mean uh, prescriptors, I mean people, uh, VIPs. So all those tasks, you will have to gather it, to arrange it, in, in a, with, a odd, with a ranking, eh? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in order to be ready for the opening. Alors, in this stage that you will put in book two, you have to be very well organized. Huh? In, in this book, book two, you have to be very clear in your mind. It has to be clear. Work breakdown structure. What should I do separately? What should I do uh, mutually? I mean, you cannot train people before employing them. So first, you employ people. Secondly, you train them. But the two activities are linked. Yeah. It will be in the chart. In the chart, it will be. Yeah. It will stop yeah. and restart. OK? I have the uh, layout of the shop. OK, I can start the detailed plans, the detailed drawings. I can. I have the layout. Uh, I can order all the tools all the materials from the beginning because the franchisor he has a template you will open for instance a restaurant okay you have to order uh, 500 plates uh, 500 forks blah 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 you sign the purchasing order you will receive everything or you will source locally <coughs> so some things can be done in parallel others cannot Okay, uh, you have to make parallelly, for instance, you, when you choose your kitchen, when you have a restaurant, uh, it has to be done same time with the laying, with the layout. You cannot order your oven if at the end the kitchen is too small and the oven is too big, it's too large. So, make the difference between the actions that can be done separately and conjointly, I mean uh, together. This is very, uh, really, I repeat, at this stage, book two, 
the retro planning, I mean the work breakdown structure from the signature till the opening, you have to be very well organized. No joke. No joke. You can, if, if you make a mistake here, uh, you will receive your croissant one month after the opening, for instance. For instance, you order from Lebanon, you order uh, frozen products. You have to order one month in advance. You don't have to wait the day before the opening. Ah, we should order the, the food. And you have to put a margin because there can be a problem. There can be a strike on the port. There can be, there can be bad weather on the, on the sea. Etc. Etc. So you always, when you make your work brain breakdown structure, you have, I advise you, and you have to be careful always to think to the worst. It's very pessimistic uh, what I am telling you, but you have to think to the worst. Okay, I, okay, I, you know, even me to come here, I'm going to tell you already to, to show you. I start today's training with you. I came yesterday from Lebanon, okay? Since I knew I have to come to Bahrain, I told me, perhaps I should come one day ahead. I mean, to come on Friday here. Okay? I told to my partner, told him, what do you think? I come Friday, if there is a problem, it's a, no, 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 Nicola, come. Go on Saturday, Saturday, come at 5.30. Sunday you start. Yesterday morning, I was in Lebanon. I go on Facebook, I saw ban of the sky on a certain part of Lebanon because of missile from Russia. What did I think at this moment? What did I think? What did I think? Finally, I checked with Gulf Earth. They told me, no, no, they come by Tripoli. There is a deposit of a shortcut. What do you? Diverted. Yes, diverted. OK, so by, by Tripoli and blah, blah. But what did I think? I should have came Friday. I should have came Friday. I should have came Friday, because yesterday it was about to cancel the trip. There is missiles from uh, a boat from Russian, Russian boats to, to strike uh, Syria. What can I do? I call Dr. Hashem, I cannot come. OK, it's a force majeure, OK. But you are here, you come from Kuwait, you, you're all very busy. So always think about the worst. Yes, time risk because you never know. You never know a strike, a problem. Uh, you never know. You you must to, you have to take a margin in all the cases. You open. You imagine you open your shop. You you, you have a problem with your uh, coffee machine. You, you 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 are a French restaurant. You are a coffee uh, coffee shop. As Paul, your coffee machine is not working. The day you open, what do you do? You have a B plan. Someone can come to, to repair you immediately. You have another machine. What do you do? So be careful. When you start in retail, in franchising, always think about the worst. It doesn't mean that the worst will occur. But you must have solution. The worst, I have no solution. This is, this is the worst. So time management, risk management with your team, for sure, because you are, it's not a one-man show. You're not alone. You have team. If there is a problem, what do we do? So this is a crucial, you know, the retro planning, I mean, the work breakdown structure between signature and opening. No joke. Take a margin. Let's say, OK, we will extend for one week, for 10 days, for 15 days. Don't play with timing. Always but. A X in the equation, but a X. Bad luck, bad luck can come, and bad luck most of the time comes when you when you don't wait for it. <laughs> Always bad luck comes on the worst moment for you, on a crucial moment. You know, so this is very important, and you as a franchisor, you you, you have to advise your franchisee on all those issues. <coughs> When I was with uh, Brioche Doré, we received from, uh, from them, from France, 
the work breakdown structure, the retro planning, since the signature of the agreement. One week after, you have to make the hoarding for the shop. You have to start. We will send you the layout. You will make the detailed plan. You go to see the kitchen uh, provider. You buy uh, accessories. Blah, blah, blah. And with a date, every time, a date. A date. So it has to be done when you are a franchisor. Really, you have to help your franchisee. You help with guidelines, with dates, with action to be taken, with tasks. Yes, you, you have, you know it's a system. You have, once I send, I'm sending you the layout of the shop, you have to ask your architect to come and you have to go to see the kitchen uh, maker. Not another solution. You have the layout, you take your architect, and you go to see the kitchen maker. You take three offers, whatever you want, the best price. But since you don't have the layout, don't see the, don't shift one step. <laughs> it's useless. You see your kitchen maker with the layout, with AutoCAD, okay. This will be my shop. Where can we put the oven? Where can we put the Windows display? Where, 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 where? There is a logical follow-up. Don't skip steps. And never go to step one if step two, to step two if step one is not uh, implemented at 100%. So there are, <coughs> like for example, opening restaurant in Bahrain, it's not an easy thing because the, you know, the In any place, it's not an easy yeah, thing, believe me. Yeah. On the it's good, good remark, good remark. Yeah. You, I want to open a restaurant, but finally the Ministry of Health tells you, no, you don't have the license. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. What should I do? What should I do? You know, you're, you're totally right. Legal issues regarding FMB business, and uh, Abdullah, you will uh, agree, it's more you have more requirements to, to fulfill. Hygiene and Ministry of Health, oh, yeah. of Agriculture, perhaps Chamber of Commerce, perhaps blah, 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 blah. So the administrative and legal part is substantial. And for sure, you have to, you so must. The defense, they will come and they will check. You know, a lot of things, <coughs> uh, preparation, and also that might not fit with the franchise. Uh, uh, but anyway, you know, the franchisor, uh, most of the time, he doesn't care, you know. He's, sending, he's selling you uh, tested and proven concepts or... Um, but the, the issue is you're right. Complying, complying with the internal and legal regulation because uh, the legislation for FMB is not the same in Bahrain than in France. I'm sure about that. By the way, in this area, and I used to live in Saudi Arabia, the legislation for food and, food and beverage is very strict. Huh? Yeah, but uh, is... Uh, whew, me, I was impressed. I was in Saudi Arabia one year, and we, had, we imported products from France. It has to be uh, certified by Mukhtabar, huh? oh, by yeah. the laboratory. Yeah, this is similar. <laughs> it's not a joke. I mean, uh, it's very serious. Very serious, and we were impressed, by the way, because... Uh, <laughs> yes, very, very technical and very, very precise. Yeah, but perhaps, but I mean, in, in a corporate, profe professional, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very uh, strict and uh, fortunately, it is strict because you, you eat, by the way, you know. So, so, book two, retro planning, work breakdown structure. Book three, architectural book. Uh, this book will be handled normally uh, and you will be helped by your architect. I mean, normally in operation manual, they don't provide you with uh, the layout of your shop, but you have uh, what we call a pilot or a model. Because you are in a mall, uh, you will open perhaps a restaurant of 50 square meters instead of 90, of, but I mean, you must have, and I put you that, sorry, just, and I put that on the, on the franchise toolkit. Uh, about the, the sample, 
the sample board. No, oh, she's right. She has to write. Really. I put the sample board. Okay, this is it. Page 13. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm not fair. I'm not fair. I'm not fair. Merci. Merci, merci. No problem. You know, you know what I did? The page 13. Because it, I think it's very important and also very uh, neglected. The picture. This is a sample board. Some, somebody knows what is a sample board? Sample board. I am franchisee in Bahrain. I will open an Italian shop. You must you as franchisor send me by DHL to make it professional also because it's not compulsory but I give you the the right way after you do it or not. You send me by DHL a sample board. What is a sample board? Sample of all the materials that will be used to build the shop. Flooring, ceiling, walls. Once uh, we received it from Brioche Doré, and really it was very nice. It, it, it was a marketing tool by DHL, small. Sure. It's a wood, you know. Mm -hmm. And only sample, you know, small square. Stainless, uh, I told you, uh, walls, ceiling, flooring. With reference, the specification, brand, if if there is a brand which is recommended, I mean, I want this kind of flooring from the Italian company, which is named blah, 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 blah. Two options. Either you commit your franchisee to use this one. Is there an agent here or not? Or do you have to import from uh, Italy, for instance? Or according to this benchmark, to this etalon, to this benchmark, Try to find something the closest and make it validate by the franchisor. <coughs> I mean, okay, this kind of flooring here, I cannot find it in Bahrain. But I have something a uh, little bit similar. You take a sample, send it to your franchisor. Do you agree or not? It works on this way. So the sample board, I insisted, I insisting on it. Very important. It, it, it shows your professionalism to your franchisee. It shows that you are organized. You are well structured in your mind. Okay. But you are the franchisor, so you will be requesting this plan. You say, this is what I want. Uh. So I'm going to give you my concept. This is what I want. I want this type of plan, uh -huh. this type of uh, furniture, this uh -huh. type of thing. So this is kind of, you know, we are on the other side now, like the franchise. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you are, yeah, you know. Is this include the business plan? What is no, 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 I'm jumping. You're jumping, but I will answer. This is for franchising. You know. The similar, it should be similar to You know, franchisor, franchisor, you have to provide that to your franchisee. No, no, no. A franchisor, I mean, I <coughs> franchisor, franchisor, I mean, if you are, if you are, if you will start franchising your business. If you are franchisee, you will receive it. If you are franchisor, you will send it. You receive that. Okay? You have to make validation. Do you accept or not? For instance, some brands, uh, for instance, Chanel in uh, Lebanon, what uh, Christian Dior, sorry, I knew that the shop came from France. They were not allowed to, because you know, in Dubai, uh, and even I think here, you have people, you have contractors, they're able to make a very nice uh, shop design, yes. as, as well as uh, friend, France. But Christian Dior, I, I knew that from uh, someone I know. So, I mean, I mean, it depends, but for, for, for I mean, I mean, for Christian Dior, so you see the brand equity, they said, no, no, you import everything from France. So they, the, if you go to Beirut, you go to Christian Dior Beirut, the shop that you see was made in France by the contractor, by, even in the oh yes, by, by the contractor yes. of Christian Dior, of Louis Vuitton, because Christian Dior is LVMH. Eh? Uh, 
profits? No. Look. Look, I can agree with you when you say perhaps there is a money issue also. Yes. There is, there is a, 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 there is a mob, uh, money issue for sure. If I tell you to, to buy it from France, yeah. Yeah, they will make money in France on the design. Okay. But still, when you are Christian Dior, can you afford to make a mistake on the decor, on the design? Can you afford? You, 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 but you arrange your decor from the shop, and then you see there is a, a gap on the windows of, ten, of 15 centimeters. Cannot. So, mainly in the luxury industry. Yes, this is for sure. This is exactly. You you have to get the same retail experience for sure. You are totally right. But I mean, mainly in in some other businesses, I saw some uh, changing. Uh, I mean, Brioche Doré. We did everything in uh, Lebanon, for instance, and it was very well done. Uh, but Dior, because they are Dior, every element of the decor came from France in container. Yeah, but you don't think that this is for business development within the country? Because what they do, they will uh, promote, you know, the, the carpenter there, they will have this. Yes. So it will, be, it will be good business for them. Yes, but than take, you know, uh, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're whatever just would come from the brand or from the concept, it will be the country you're, 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 benefits. You're right. But let us take also as much benefit as we, as we, we can. For example, in Bahrain, for example, I want to do the institute, to franchise the institute. I'll tell them I want to just to take certain chairs from, for example, Bukhannan. We have a company here, or carpet from this place. Yes, this is a development for. But a, you're 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 right. But you know, at the end, the rule it has to be validated by the franchisor. That's all. That's, that's this is the story. Uh, for Brioche Doré, for instance, we found very nice shares. Uh, through a uh, Lebanese agent yeah. of uh, we didn't import the chairs from uh, France we bought it yeah. from an agent in Lebanon who has very nice chairs complying with the same colors same brand identity of the, and we bought it from uh, Lebanon so you know there is no rule but indeed regarding the luxury industry it's specific you know when you have Christian Dior brand uh, it's not as you have a bakery you know Normally, yes, one, yes, but you know, it's a luxury brand. They cannot afford, you know, and if you are not able to pay a decor for one shop, they will kick you out. They don't care. So specifically for uh, luxury industry, you have to import everything. This is clear. Uh, so the sample board, very important as a marketing tool. <coughs> as a marketing tool. Uh, architectural book. So, with your, with your architect, with your architect, okay, for product and services and merchandising without the POS. Catalogs, products, catalogs, products, merchandising. You can put it here or you can put it in marketing and communication. But you have to show, and this, this, uh, this book can be updated with uh, the net now. Because you have different collection. I mean, you don't have the same collection. If you work in fashion, for instance, in glasses, in collections are always moving. So this book, in terms of products, is a typical book that you have to update. Because you have sunglass, the sunglass of December 2015, are not the sunglasses in December. December 14. You have some business, you know, it's a two, at least two collections per year. Or if you are in, <coughs> in uh, Zara or HM, it's one collection, it's each 10 days. So the issue of, bo of the book for products and service products and many, many products. And even for food? For, for food, when you release, you know, it's very, uh, I will insert your question. For food, when you have new items in a menu, <coughs> when I was the season also winter test. Yes, tout à fait. La carte d'été, carte d'hiver, exactly. You have two, two menu normally from winter, from summer. Christmas, uh, Christmas uh, menu. 
exactly. You, you, you have to update it. And it's, it's very easy. I mean, you have to send the specification. You have a new recipe. You send the, 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 the new recipe on digital format to your franchisee for Christmas, for Ramadan, for whatever you want. New, new event, new event. December is coming, that's why we're changing yes. the window to Christmas. Yes, exactly. So uh, this book has to be uh, really uh, updated. Uh, and running the architectural book also, I mean, normally in retail we say that each four years or five years, you have to remove your retail concept, you know, your design. It's a rule, it's not a rule. Some concepts are very strong and can last a lot. Other concepts, they are, you have to readapt it very quickly. There is no rule. But it's <coughs> difficult to keep the same concept. It would be boring after a while. Yes, and you cannot, you know, you go to in a, in a coffee shop, you know, if it's the same decor uh, within 10 years. Uh, la durée, they didn't change a lot of time. What? La durée. La durée, yes, but la durée, uh, even they improve, they change, huh? la durée. They yeah. change also, yes. They keep the colors. Also. And it's adapted here, for instance, in the Middle the East. The yeah. They opened in Beirut three months ago, la durée. Uh, it's not exactly la durée when you are in Champs-Élysées or Madeleine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little oriental touch. But well done, huh? Yeah, even uh, Well done, nice, but yeah. twist. Uh, it's not, because you have, uh, yeah, you have oriental customers. <laughs> so you can, you can keep the DNA of la durée at 90%. And people, they love ear gold and, uh, you know, and uh, fioriture. And you, you can stress a little bit, you know? So, products and services. Book five, promotion, communication, how to create traffic and awareness, sales technique, principle of sales. Here also there is no rule. You can make two books, for instance, for that. You can make a specific book for sales technique, as you want. I mean, sales technique, I, I speak about that in the Franchise Toolkit. I mean, you sell shirts. How to ask to your sales to sell with a shirt, a tie, and uh, pants. You have techniques. Someone is coming to order a coffee shop. You have to propose a bottle of water. This is sales technique. You have manuals for that. It's a method. It's not uh, fanan, as you say, arts. You have methods for that. Someone want a sandwich? Okay, a bottle of water. You want a coffee? Okay, a bottle of water. Etc. Etc. Over. Yes. You have to. Well, when you are in, in, in retail, you know that the, the game is to increase the average ticket. Halas, it's finished. This is the story. You have to get the higher average ticket. So if you add one bottle of water a day, and if you have uh, 300 clients a day, <coughs> at uh, one dollar, uh, the enfin, one dollar the cost for you is uh, 10 cents for the bottle of water. It can make money if you do that 30, 365 days. You know? So the, 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 this tool. The sales technique tools, uh, according to me, it has to be really done professionally. And perhaps you have to be helped by people from sales. You have methods, you can gather info, you know, on Google, or you can, but normally you have to know it. I mean, if you work in a coffee shop, you know how to, to, to increase your, to make a vent additionnel. I mean, additional sales, we, we name it, okay? You, you must know it. The typical example is a bottle of water. But you have many things. I have a promotion. I have a new item in my menu. Uh, you have combos. If you take one coffee, uh, one tartelette, and one uh, soda, it's 10,000 uh, Lebanese pounds. You have many ways. But this is a job, you know. This is, uh, this is technical. You cannot invent things. Oh, what can I do? Uh, 
It has to be done professionally, these kind of things. So you can be helped by people who specialize in sales. You have uh, companies uh, or freelancers, people who have the habit to deal with this kind of issue. As I was telling you, you know, sales technique, you can, this part, if you want, you can extract it and create a specific book as you want. Promotion, communication, how to create traffic and awareness. I take the topic at the end of the book. Always to privilege when you have a few budget. The rule, I give you the rule. Uh, always to privilege local communication when you have few money. What is local communication? Your windows, you pay it, you pay your rent. The windows belong to you and the inside of the shop also it's yours. So at least, <coughs> if you don't have a lot of money, use your windows and the interior of your shop. Meaning, and it's something that I, as a mistake, it's something that I always see. You have a windows, you have to see the brand and uh, A level, huh? not put me the signage uh, three meters uh, under my head. Windows, you have to see the brand name, but observe it. When you enter into a shop, and yesterday I was in city center, most of the time the brand name disappears. You don't see the brand name. And it's a big mistake. Why? Because your client, when he enters, you know, when your client, you enter into the shop. I go to make a round, okay, in the shop. I will stay 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You have to repeat your brand name inside the shop. <laughs> He's here. He is here. You are in a restaurant. You will stay one hour eating. Don't think that because the person is in the restaurant, she will always come back. No. Put brands, your brand name, signage, logos. I don't tell you to, to make us in the diners in America to put brands everywhere, you know, on the chairs, on the table, on the napkin, on the windows, on the, the lights, or no. But on a clever way, in retail, we say that when the customer is inside the shop, he belongs to you and you are allowed to remind him the brand name, even if he's inside the shop. Yeah, even the logo, some of the people that do. Me, I offer, uh, yesterday I was saying that even in city center, and big names, huh? you don't see the brand name. You enter into the shop, you have a nice windows, nice signage. You enter into the shop, the brand disappearing. How come? I am client, I will stay here quarter an hour. Put your brand. Put your brand. Put your brand, logo, signage. I'm thinking now. On the Yes, but it's nice. It's, uh, there is a way to do it. There is a way to do it. But, but, but it's important. It's important. It's important. It's important. Uh, I repeat, with small budgets, privilege, windows, and the inside of your shop. After, if you tell me I have unlimited marketing budget, it's another thing. If you have unlimited budget, I tell you, make billboard, make uh, everything. But few budget, your windows, and your shop. Rule. Clear? So promotion, communication. So you, you will have, for instance, in this uh, book, to show your franchisee the example of a former advertising campaign. I, I mean, you made a campaign for Ramadan mm -hmm. last year, but the artwork, what we did, what we, the franchisee has to see that he will benefit from a support from you. Uh, to sh show him that when you enter into this franchise, I support you, I send you framework. Okay, the franchisor won't pay, won't pay advertising for you in Bahrain. 
but he will send you what we call the artwork. I mean the, the digital support with the, with the logo, with the, with the logo, with the slogan, with the pictures. This will be sent by the franchisor. So show, make a book, a specific book, and you will integrate it here. <coughs> oh, me as a franchisor, I support my franchisee, providing them artwork and strategy to uh, maintain, you know, a, a good uh, marketing level and of communication of your, of the That's brand. That's why you should choose a good company. You don't choose for a franchise. No, no, but yeah. look, for company, you are speaking about out, the partner, outsourcing. The partner, right? eh? But normally, you know, you have two, two uh, you have good uh, remark. You have two, two, two ways of doing things. Either you have someone in-house, if you have a marketing department, you can from time to time ask your marketing department from a advertising company, or you outsource directly everything to a marketing and advertising company. You have two solutions, depending on your uh, budget also. If you can pay a very famous uh, advertising agency, it's one thing. If you cannot, you can hire a, a freelancer who will be, by the way, perhaps a very talented also. Huh? There is nothing, you have creatives, freelance, they are, who are very talented, huh? You can go to see Publicis, or Ogilvy, or Impact BBDO, or uh, Saatchi, okay, the big, uh, big names. But sometimes you have freelancers, they are very talented, and they are ten times uh, cheaper. So, so, so evaluate this issue. Before starting working with a very famous <coughs> advertising company, you have to, to think, yes, in terms of budget. Because big advertising companies are very expensive. Expensive. It's uh, well known, you know. If you go to see Saatchi today, I want you to handle my uh, advertising campaign. You have to come with a big, uh, with your credit card or check, but with a big amount. So, book five, promotion, communication. Yeah. Then Kim, they will give us money. <laughs> There are three representatives. <laughs> Book six, human resource recruiting training leadership management method. I'm here. Yes, <laughs> she will speak on my behalf. Uh, so, not, I would like not simply because it's very important. Uh, first of all, as I told you uh, this morning, most of the mistakes which are done when you have a concept the mistake comes from a human uh, factor, not from machines or not from uh, goods. So, from the beginning, you have to, and normally, according to your experience as franchisor, you must have an organigram, organigram, you know, with a job description of each uh, worker or person, employee needed to carry out the uh, the job. I mean, you you uh, you want to run a restaurant. Do I need a restaurant manager? The franchisor will tell you yes or no. Do I need an operation manager? Yes or no. Do I need a brand manager? Perhaps it will be the same. First first step: the brand manager will be the operation manager. How many cookers do I need? One or two? How many people to help the cooker? Two, three? Considering about the holidays and uh, legal vacation. How many waiters for a shop, for a restaurant of 80 square meters? How many waiters? I take a specific cashier or everybody is a cashier? All those issues will be, all those answers will be given to you by the franchisor according to what? To his experience. For instance, I give you an example. I have an Italian client, I told you. In their concept, they don't have a shop manager. They don't have. They don't have a shop manager. I mean, you go, you go to the shop, 
you have three sales, there is no shop manager. Everybody is shop manager and uh, nobody also, I would like to say. <laughs> you know? No, no, it works very well. <laughs> uh, it works very well. But, uh, to be frank with you, I was, I was uh, a little bit surprised at the beginning. But, uh, no, but, but you know, the, the owner told me, Nicola, if we take me to be frank with you, I, I was very surprised. How come you yes. know shop manager? Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a manager, you know it can be a mess. Yeah. And 40 demand the best restaurant in Italy. 40 demand all those people, rich people, they, uh. the area. they don't have managers. Huh? Ah, uh, alors. Uh, but but uh, forget forget the, the the name because the name you know you're not shop manager you are team leader you are. Let's forget that because it's formalism. You name it the name, shop manager team machin. But the issue, they decided. What is uh, what time I have? Two. Two. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Quarter an hour. And I want to make an announcement. An announcement. Oh. As passenger announcement, as in the plane yesterday. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'll make it now. Your graduation ceremony is on Tuesday at 11.30. It's going to go into the Tuesday, this Tuesday? Yes. It's good because. Okay. Just, we finish, we finish. Merci pour le. Thank you. It's got suspense. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just to. Uh, b -b 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 yes. No shop manager, no team leader. I was upset. I told Mario, how come? Uh, you know, Italians sometimes also do. Oh, yes, you know, Nicola, we do, we do. Uh, they're from Milano. You know, Milano is different. But. Uh, yes, but you know, sometimes there is, a, you know, Italians, they have the best and the worst. But uh, the, 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 those people are very talented, you know. They, they make 20 million a year, so I mean, uh, of euros, so it's serious. He told me, Nicola, look, we put team manager, shop manager, jealousy. He has more than me, $100 more than me, blah, blah, jealousy. And people against the team manager, against the shop manager, and the shop manager left, and blah, blah, finished. Everybody sales. <coughs> anyway, it was, an, it was an example to tell you, again, no rule. No rule. No, take, take the, what you... I'm happy now, because I was thinking how to put a manager. No, 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 but you know, there is no rule. Me, I was upset, but uh, the guy told me, Nicola, it's working very well. Okay, no problem. You know? So, in this book, in this book, in this book, you have to uh, show <laughs> the franchisee, I mean, into detail with the job description, what they have to do. What is the job description? Is yes. The last point, everything, the purpose of the job, okay, the responsibilities, the duties and responsibilities, relationship with the, with the people, like I just said, like, you know, the, like, you know the, uh, targets, uh, dimension, job dimensions. You have the uh, part of the chart also, the organizational chart, competencies, uh, competencies knowledge, skills, so, attitude, everything. What you are telling is right. Everything is right. To make it, I would like to say, uh, yes, you know, when you put, sometimes I'm so advertising on newspapers with uh, job description, it's one page, two page. You have uh, you have to be the best, by the way. You have and to be uh, unique. Go. They just you, ha you, you have to be unique. And they go by what? Capability to work under pressure, uh, team spirit, uh, innovative, dynamic, uh, very good sales, uh, good uh, writing. Uh, you have to know everything okay. if you write a uh, job description. I mean rules. You have to detail, in, you have to, to put into details what are the tasks that you are requiring from your employee. What I want you to do. But not to say at the end and all the other things. Yeah. <laughs> Because most of the time on job description, okay, you will do that, 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 and all other things required by the business. Be careful. Why? Because 
You know people, you pay people for certain things, okay? Book number six, Human Resources, Recruiting, Training, Leadership, Management Method. As you told us, normally a job description can be very uh, complex and can be very, uh, can enter into many details. I, I, I mean, merci. I mean the most, the most important, according to me, you have to fix two things. The tasks that will be, that will have to be delivered, the issue of reporting, the issue of reporting. I mean, I am shop manager. To whom should I report? Be careful, reporting is a key issue. What will, who will be the person who will be uh, on my head? Reporting is very important. So task, reporting, and also, this is something specific, the autonomy that I will get to carry out my duty. I mean, you are brand manager, okay? You have to develop the brand, you have to increase the sales, etc., etc. I am the GM, you come to visit me, you tell me, Nicolas, I want, uh, I want 5,000 bucks to make uh, an advertising campaign, on social media, on. If every time you come to visit me and I'm telling you, no, I cannot, no money, I can, no, 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 no. At the end, it will create problems. I mean, you can have a great description, uh, and mainly in this area of the world, you can have a, a, a huge job description. Entering into details, you will be that, 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 and uh, you can be GM, eh? you can be GM, because I'm speaking about things that I saw. Again, it's from my experience, it's not invented. You can be a GM, a GM, general manager, but when you're GM in a family business, perhaps you're nothing. <laughs> perhaps you're nothing. Perhaps the wa nothing. nothing in terms of decision. I mean, perhaps the wife of the owner is more powerful than you. <laughs> That's what I want to say. So you have to see, and this is something with experience that you can see. It happened to me once I got an offer from a company you have the big job title, GM and blah, blah, and <coughs> task, okay. Reporting, okay. And when you ask the means that I will get to reach the objective, because okay, you, you, you're asking me to uh, increase the sales of 10% and you give me one year to, to reach this objective. What, you ask me to make the war, but what are you giving to me? A water gun? I need means. I need means, I need tools. And in business, tools are, tool is money. Alors, okay, you won't visit your, your boss every day telling him, I need the $5,000 to make an advertising campaign, okay. But the issue of the means, uh, of the tools that you will get to reach the objective is very important. So in the job description, as I was telling you, you can make the most beautiful job description. Clever people, I mean clever people. Tasks, okay. Reporting, okay. Means, I mean, you, you can ask, you, you, you are hired, uh, 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 how can I say, uh, managerial position. What will I get in terms of uh, the budget? You ask me to boost the brand. What will be the marketing budget that I will be able, to, that, that I will benefit? I have a marketing budget. No, I mean the means, you ask me to, to boost the brand, okay. But what do you give me to, to reach the, the objective? Yes. Uh, your, my, your goodwill? Okay, go. What's no. it for me? What is it for that for Not what is it for me, okay. You, 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 you have incentives as a bonus, okay. But if you ask me to boost my business, 
to boost the business, and you don't give me any dollar to, 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 to perhaps to hire a consultant in social medias to make social medias optimization, well, you cannot do anything. Ah. Yeah. Ah, so this, is, this is a typical uh, example. So, no matter how good he is that general manager, he cannot. All you have one month. So, yes, you, 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 yeah, you, can, you can have luck. I mean, you have a new, you can have a luck, I mean, a conjuncture, new conjuncture with a big boost. You can have luck. You know, luck can intervene at this stage. But normally, as you mentioned precisely, it will be very difficult to reach the objective if you don't have means. I mean, in terms of means, I don't speak about one million of USD. But at least give me 5,000 bucks. I have to launch a campaign on Facebook and on uh, Twitter, and on, uh, we have to hire a, a community manager. You know what is a community manager? Mm -hmm. What is a community manager? Community or committee? Community manager. Community, what is it? Okay, somebody who will be talking to the community and uh, precisely that. because it's a new job. Huh? I'm telling you that, but it's, it's social media. Yes. Manager. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. The name is a big uh, trendy word. <laughs> community manager. So I know many in Lebanon, and you can be freelance because you know community manager. He can work from his house huh? or at the coffee shop. It's not uh, mm -hmm. okay. Community manager, he will represent you, he will interact with the followers, with the uh, fans, with, uh, with uh, not fans, with people who are angry, <laughs> at the opposite. On your behalf, on your Facebook page, on your Twitter page, and YouTube, and whatever you want. Okay? So, community manager, you can hire a consultant at part-time, at uh, Nosdawam, as you say, or... Yes. Freelancer, or you can have someone on site in your company, coming at eight and leaving at five. Okay. But I think that when you start, when you have a small budget, you can start with a consultant. I mean, I used to work in a company. Uh, the, the people was managing many brands. He has the same community manager for three brands. I mean, can can you know? You can do that. But now you must have a community manager. Uh, example. When I was uh, in Lebanon with Brioche Doré, once we received a, a message on Facebook, your crepe is very bad. Awful. You're on Facebook. You have a few thousand followers. Someone is sending you. I, I, I taste the crepe Nutella. There was a strange taste. <coughs> Danger. You have 2,000 followers. What do you do For sure, we had a good guy, community manager. First of all, he saw the post directly. I mean, because you know, community manager, if you have a post, if you have a post today at 2 p.m., and if you answer tomorrow at 6 p.m., there is a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. So community manager, the guy, he has to spend his life on Facebook and Twitter and blah, blah. Directly, the community manager called us. There is a post on Facebook just now, five minutes. The guy, he, uh, he found that the crepe was not salty, blah, 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 blah. Answer, we invite you to Brioche Doré for uh, a crepe with one of your friends to share our experience and we do apologize uh, if blah, 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 blah. The guy came with his girlfriend. Was he, was he honest when he wrote that? I don't know. Because a crepe, you know, to make a bad crepe, uh, it can be difficult. When you put Nutella and normal, uh, normal uh, tain, how do you say? Ajin, pat, ajin. To make a, a, a bad, uh, bad tasted crepe, I don't know how, how it happened. Anyway, he came, we offered them crepe, drink, he posted back, thank you very much, Brioche Doré team, nice customer service, blah, 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 blah. 
Yes, but you, because you don't care. You, you don't care. You, 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 you offer two crepes, you offer two crepes and uh, two orange juice. This is not the issue. But you save your reputation. Assumptions. The, the Facebook that I'm invited him or something. Yes, for sure. All the story is, is that. You have to mention on Facebook. We invite you, blah, 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 blah. The, the, the yes, but you know, you, but no, no, you're right. But people, you know, you have always crooks and uh, dishonest people, you know. And perhaps he was one of them, by the way, this guy. But at least the way that we treated him, uh, professional way, customer service, you know. Yeah, yes. Let me just tell you a few things on this gentleman. Sorry, I I will interrupt. If you don't mind. Ahmed came to me in Ramadan. Well, and I have a hamburger shop. And in my brain I said, another hamburger shop. Okay, giant burger, burger line, you know, all these names. And then he said, you should come and eat. So, you know, Ramadan is difficult. What time do you come during the day? Even if you're closed, it's okay. I just want to see the setup. Then he said, no, you cannot come. Because Anna, I cook, and I sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning. And then we open. The yeah, he's, and I open again at 4 o'clock. So you can only come through Ramadan. And then I said, fellas, ignore the guy. Hamburger, <laughs> And then he came back to me again, so, two months later. He said, Ramadan is over, come. This is the guy I told you about in the morning, okay? He cooks, his brother uses the cashier, and his brother cooks, okay? Uh, what they have is a hamburger shop in a different way. You know, you eat freely, okay? They don't give you shuaks, keki, they don't give you, they give you gloves. So you eat with your hand. And I took my two boys and my wife and we had dinner there. Very well priced compared to the quality. And this is extremely important in any business, in any franchise. Right? If you buy a hamburger for $5, you expect a $5 service. If you pay $50 for a hamburger, you don't expect it to be brought to you like this. In Plaza Athene in Paris, Alain Ducasse, burger. So you expect that higher standard. Um, and he has somebody from Qatar, somebody from Kuwait, so. and he's, the nice thing, you know, he's very famous, but nobody knows him. <laughs> he's very famous on Instagram, you know, with the young kids, Russian kids, sorry, you know. Compared to me, you're a young kid. Okay? Like Ahmed, the Umru is 22 years old, yes. so, 22, 23 years old. He is very famous within that age group. <laughs> within my age group, he's not known. I don't know. He had, he's, ah, he didn't speak yet. But just one last comment. We had a lady studying in Dubai, who's a relative of Dr. Hashim. Okay. When she came out to raise him, she said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the She went, yeah. even those who are studying in Dubai know okay. about this. Okay. You know? mm -hmm. And I'm sure none of you heard about it. No, no. You did. Yeah. I, 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 and I know you were more or less his age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in our age, that's not the thing. You know? But he's really a very real Bahraini guy, you know, who goes to the kitchen, cooks the meat, does everything. When I even told him, did you want to franchise? Okay? How will you franchise? He said, I cook. I said, but how will you pass this to the other guy? If that other guy doesn't want to cook, then you will have to employ someone. So what's special about you? Angus beef, huh? Angus beef, which everybody can buy. 
The secret is in the recipe. You know? Next to him is the lady who makes their designs for sweets. They bring you in a big plate of ice cream and then they pour some liquid and then you have all the smoke coming out. Show them the pictures, I can't on Instagram if you are. Okay? This is the quality of the entrepreneurs who want to franchise their business. You know? And he's been there for three months, four months now? Five. Five months. Nicola will give you a review of that. Five months. I saw his uh, Instagram pictures okay. already. So what we will try to do is to see during this week. Yes, I have to, to go on site. Yeah, we'll go have to taste at first. <laughs> no? so After we'll this Ahmed will discuss me, you, and Nicola yes. when we can come and have, you know, to see the place. And have, okay? yeah, I'm willing really to visit uh, yeah. his Sorry, restaurant. So, uh, to recap, Job description, tasks, reporting, and when you reach a managerial position, at least a budget or a bracket of budget. And as you said uh, very truly, if you don't have budget, you can only rely on a better uh, situation, economic situation, and which can happen, by the way. But uh, without no money today in business, and because marketing now is costing a lot of money, this is, this is a fact, you know. Marketing now is very expensive. If you want to buy a billboard for one month, the, the, the cheapest being for sure social medias. But social media, you know, now you have many studies that show that social medias wouldn't bring as much as customers as uh, promised. I mean, uh, mainly Facebook. A uh, lot of people, a lot of marketers now say that Facebook is not, uh, yes, it's not the great tool that we, we thought. Okay, I am on Facebook, I have, uh, okay, but... It's not as simple, you know, to reach one client, to make, it, to make it become a customer, and I mean a recurrent customer. I mean, you come once and you come again. Not I come once to see and I escape. It's not easy. Oh, you, you, you have many tools and indeed digital is... is is very important, you know, with the search engine marketing, search mm -hmm. engine optimization, uh, social media optimization, you have SME, SMO, uh, all that. You have people that are specialized for that. Um, if you have a good network, mainly in, in a small countries as Bahrain, I think it's very important. I think that you can become, uh, Ahmad, uh, you, as a brand, what we call in brand management, a brand endorser. Yeah. I mean by yourself. I mean, Crave is Ahmad. Ahmad is Crave. I mean, your image is a part, and I was speaking with them before you came, of the storytelling of the brand. Because this is a nice story, not to flate you, but we were speaking before you came about storytelling. Okay? Storytelling A brand have an expression again Decor packaging products People you are a part of the expression of the brand of your brand. I mean when I see you people they associate you to Crave You have a content. I mean you have values question According to you, what are the values of Crave? It's, it's a case study, really, it's interesting. If, I, if I'm asking you the values that Crave creates or generates values. Um, Dr. Marshall previously asked me, because he has this is my restaurant. He was like, what do you find that it's a competitive advantage between you and your competition? Uh, not, not. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it? Me being in my restaurant every day. Not my food. Just me being there. So, so, interesting, but go deeper. What is the value? 
You are every day in your restaurant and you are cooking. What is the value that you are generating? There is a value. The value. Go. It's his thing. More than that. The value. Guys, he's telling us, we, we, we reach really the DNA. He's telling us, I am in my restaurant every day and from the morning till the evening, every day with my brother, isn't it? Values of Ahmad. At least what values he has. His passion? Yes, okay. I buy. Yes. Passion and the first one. Is here from the morning till the evening. Is 20 more? More. It's hard. More than passion. No. No. Yes, but from the morning till the evening is 22. Perhaps he, yes. Work. He is hard worker. He is 22. He is 22 years old. Perhaps he would prefer going out with his girlfriend, going to the cinema, no? No, I suppose. He is 22 years old. He is creating his business, a family business. He is working with his brother. At least the value that I see at first sight, he is a hard worker. He is working. It's work. It's not, jo it's not a game. It's not a hobby. He wants to make money. He is a hard worker. So the value, the first value that I put in his brand, and you are a brand endorser because you, you embody your brand, it's a work. It's a value, no? It's a valuable uh, uh, idea. Work is a hard worker. It's attracting. A young guy, he wants to become entrepreneur, working from the morning till the evening. And a person who can trust, a trustable person. Trustable, val uh, work, what else? The value of your business. Go deeper. The value. Passion. Which value? Passion, okay. Work, passion, and? Love, uh, I don't know, uh, if he has a girlfriend. <laughs> love the, love the uh, passion, passion. We don't get into a relationship 22 years old. Uh, yes. That's at our age. Now, no, they are 28, uh, 29 years <laughs> old. So passion, passion, work. I believe in Passion, work. Passion, work, what else? According to you, I ask you really the founder. The, the, the values that you are putting in this concept. Passion, work, what else? I see many... Future, future. Future is life. <coughs> well, yes, but I see others. Other, other values. Work, passion, yes, I buy. What, what else? What else? What, what did you put? What, uh, your vision? Your, what, what do you see deeper in, in your concept? What values uh, strive you to, to, to reach that? Okay. Inter uniqueness, interesting, because it's. it's yes, so it's linked to, to work, self esteem. Okay. Uh, uniqueness, very interesting, because this morning we, sp we spoke, exactly, challenging, we spoke this morning about differentiation. Yeah. So this is what you are telling, uniqueness. Very important. Because, believe me or not, this morning I was telling them, if you want today to create a, a burger business, you have to be very talented. <laughs> because some people did it a long time ago. And they are professional. Big names that you know. McDo and whatever you want. So if you want to success, you don't have two options. You have one. And for sure, you choose this one. You have to be on a differentiation and you have to be on a niche market, something specific. Because your goal is not to compete with McDonald's. You cannot. Forget it. You have to bring something specific, and you have, as you told us, to bring a competitive advantage, which is, you know, you have three kinds of competitive advantage in corporate strategy. You are either cost 
advantage, priced uh, cost advantage, priced advantage, or a mix of two, plus niche market. I explained. Cost advantage, I mean, you can produce burgers at a lower price than the competitors. <coughs> Is it your case? Second solution. You must be able to sell your burger at a higher price of your competitors. You know, you have cost or price advantage. Quality also. For sure, we speak about rapport uh, overall value. Mm -hmm. Afif told us that you, you have very good price, isn't it? So you are based on price advantage. I mean, if I go to your restaurant, I will taste a very good burger for a reasonable price, isn't it? What Afif said? Yes. <laughs> be sure, tell me yes. Well, one thing is that, is that the challenge that you will be able to continue as you are now. Now you st you're just starting, you're having a one vision. It's you, your brother, you don't have a salary to chef or teacher or employee. But once you sit fast, you have to get prices. But yes, there will be added costs. Although the volume will increase, but you will have added costs in certain but you're totally right. When you start duplicating, you, you, you have a marginal cost. But uh, the ability for him to increase the cost, to the, the price will be very easy if he has an improvement name. Like yes. Everybody knows you. Even like after a while, if you add 10, 15%, yes, you're right. people are willing to pay for you because they know that you have a wonderful But me, me, really, I uh, wish to, to taste your burger and to see your concept, you know, because... But everybody would have yeah, to taste but, but to tell, to tell <laughs> To tell, to tell you the truth, you know, we, we speak about the seven elements of a concept. It's not, it's not, only, it's not only the food and, uh, okay? And food, food, <laughs> food. But what is interesting, and uh, it's it, when you have a concept, when you have a concept, it's very interesting to see the element of the concept. We are speaking about the Afif told us it's good, good meat, and okay. But we don't speak when you speak franchise and concept. You don't speak about products only about products. Sometimes the packaging is more important than the products. So when you have a franchise or retail concept. You have many elements. That, uh, there is a combina combination, combination, a mix of many elements. The quality of the product can be one of the of the thing, but you have the design. You have the quality of the uniform of your employees. <laughs> you have the box, the colors, and the design of the box where you put your burger. You have the light in your shop. You have the music. You have the counter, you have your windows displays. The quality of the flooring, the quality of the ceiling, etc., etc. I mean, when we speak about a concept, let's say he has a concept. <coughs> okay, you have a concept, but the concept must be, as you say, uniqueness, or I mean differentiated. You have to bring something new something new, not compulsory in terms of product. At least in terms of experience. I mean, if I go to Crave, I have to, when I will leave, to tell me oh, it was nice experience, I will come back with my girlfriend, with friends, with, 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 with. But you have as a competitive advantage to, to go back. Normally we say in, in corporate strategy, you have three, three kind of competitive advantage, huh? cost, I mean, you try to produce cheaper than the other, price, you can price more expensive, I mean, typically in the luxury industry. And when you try, to, when you manage to sell a, a purse for 4,000 euros, you, you, you have a, it's a price advantage. I mean, nobody, uh, not everybody is able to sell a purse at 4,000 euros, 
If you are Hermès or Louis Vuitton, you can sell a purse at 4,000 euros. If you are Nicola Bags, uh, you cannot. <laughs> you know? So this is a price advantage. You have a mix of both when you can have a cost lower than the competitors and when you can sell more expensive than the competitors. And you have the niche market. Uh, I don't know your concept. I saw only the pictures on Instagram, but you have to see. <coughs> yes, as you said, the uniqueness. And uniqueness, for sure, comparing to the market here. Because I don't know the market. Uh, do you have a potential competitors? Is your competitors a burger shop? Not compulsory. It can be other kind of restaurant. Because I think that you don't compete with the big names. What I saw on the on Instagram, your, your vision is not to beat uh, McDonald's. This is not that at all. You want to create specif something specific, a niche market. So when you are a niche market, the big advantage, in, advantage is the following. You are what we call in marketing in a blue ocean strategy. What does it mean? You create your market and there are no sharks. It's blue ocean, no sharks. You are the first mover. I mean, your kind of burger, which is perhaps a kind of a gourmet burger. You know what, what I saw in the pictures. I'm not sure, but to see that. And gourmet burger now is very fashionable uh, in France for, for two, three years. Because the big chief in France, they created gourmet burger. I mean, you can go now in Paris, in Plaza Athénée, to order a burger cooked by Monsieur Alain Ducasse, one of the most famous chiefs, and you paid your burger uh, 60 euros. <laughs> okay? So a specific burger, 60 euros. Oh, it's a trend now, huh? Gourmet burger. It's, uh, you can see. Yeah, worldwide. By the way, it came from France, just to tell you. But it, really, it came from France, from the chief. No, from the. French chief, you know, they wanted to reinvent, you know, and <coughs> they, they wanted to reinvent really the burger to, to make the burger more attractive and to have, by the way, a differentiation in France. I mean, uh, people in France, you know that the second, just to, to tell you, the link between burger and France, you know that the second country for McDo franchise is France, huh? In the world. What? No, no, it's, uh, this is uh, perception. But me, I, I saw the figures. France is the second country for McDonald's unit restaurants in terms of numbers. I guarantee the figures. You have USA and France. Meaning, in France, we love burger, as in uh, all the countries, over the, all over the world. No, Starbucks in France, it doesn't work for many reasons. Yeah, yes. In, in France, Starbucks didn't take off for many reasons. I will explain you that. But the gourmet burger, the French chief, they wanted, because it is marketing, huh? they wanted to take profit of the burger business. But when you are French, what is your legitimacy to make burger? You don't have. Burger is coming from where? From America. Masbot? America. Yes or no? Yes. America. They invented the burger. You're French, you say. And I, I, I'm speaking also for Ahmad. I think the same reasoning. You know, you're in Bahrain. It can be apparently difficult to, to, to compete American uh, burger chains. And mainly here you have everybody. You know, isn't it? You, you have all the big chains here. So what is your legitimacy? to create a burger restaurant. Either you're in France or in Bahrain, the same problematic. French chips, they said, okay, we won't make a normal burger. We will adapt it. Oh, they created the more gourmet. Gourmet burger, a twist, a foie gras, blah, blah, we add, we say, blah, 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 blah. Which is, by the way, all marketing, because it's only marketing. But they manage to create a niche. I mean, if you go to Paris now, in each cafe, uh, trottoir, bistro, you have burger. 
even in Paul now, huh? I don't know here in the region, you have even in Paul, in France, Brioche Doré, you have burgers, but the twist, gourmet burger, French burger, etc., etc. Be why? Because you don't have any legitimacy to say, I will make the same burgers that they do in Texas, in Austin. You have to find something different. It's what you did, what you told us. I create something specific, and you use the word uniqueness. And you have only this solution, by the way. <laughs> you don't have two solutions. You cannot. You will make better burgers than uh, Texas. I was in Texas two years ago. You, make, you cannot, nobody on earth can make better uh, burgers than uh, Texas because they have very good meat, as you know, and uh, in Texas or in Canada. You know? So you choose uniqueness, differentiation, and it's the only way that you have to choose because on this niche you won't find McDonald's and KFC and Hardee's and whatever you want. So I like the word uniqueness and this morning we were speaking about that. Differentiation. You want to create a business burger, bravo. And you know that you are different. If not, you cannot survive. Possible, I go to McDonald's. You have to bring something new. This is all the story of business, by the way. Huh? Why Apple is leader today? Uh, because they bring, they bring, they, and again, link to innovation. Again, we were speaking this morning a lot about innovation. Huh? Again, franchising, niche market, differentiation is clearly linked with innovation. In, no, uh, innovation, it can be a sauce. Huh? You invent a sauce. No problem. You change the bread. Change the meat. You invent a recipe for the meat. Whatsoever. But you have to be different. That's why uh, Wednesday I will make a session uh, on uh, franchising and innovation. Really, I want to, to show you the link between franchising and innovation. If you want to have a, a parent franchise, I mean a franchise with a long run, on the long run, you have to innovate. And it's not an option. Innovate or die. It's not an option, huh? Not I should, no. Innovate or die. Similar to what happened with the Nokia. Yes. They did not innovate. So I, will, I will quote the example of Nokia and of Kodak also. You know Kodak? <laughs> Kodak, believe it or not, they invented the digital photography 20 years ago. You know that? One engineer in Kodak invented the digital camera he brought that to uh, the management of Kodak 20 years ago. They told him, uh, no need. It's bullshit. <laughs> Last year, Kodak was bankrupt. Chapter 11, finished. <laughs> so you know what we say in France? You are, you are wrong when you, are, when you are right before others. You know the expression? Vous avez tort quand vous avez raison avant les autres. You know? He was so visionary, this man was so visionary, but too much visionary. <laughs> 20 years ahead. People, they don't understand the disruptive innovation, as Fatima said. Disruptive. Because it is disruptive innovation. When you have a digital camera now, you can make uh, 2,000 pictures and print it on your uh, imprimant or outsourcing your, pi your pictures. But I like Kodak, I like the old style. Yes, but uh, it's finished. Kodak, uh, you can, if you have one, you can put it and put it under a glass as a museum, a souvenir. You know? Now you have Sony, you have uh, Samsung, you have digital <coughs> camera, you can take 1,000 uh, pictures, blah, 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 as soon as you have uh, batteries. Computer, you can print it, send it, 
resize it, crop it, modify it, whatever you want. Change the color. Whatever you want. You know? But uh, now, uh, you know, innovation. So you can innovate in many uh, scope of business. In many scope of business. Uh, and sometimes in scope of business <laughs> that you cannot even uh, predict, that you cannot imagine. <coughs> I am looking for an example of a disruptive... Uh, Yes. Yes. We can now download and watch it on the OTV with subscription. So nobody is going to rent DVDs anymore. Finished. Uh, I think also of destructive technology, which I can see now how the e readers Kindle is yeah. destroying the book, printed yeah. book. And like big stores like Barnes and Noble, those, if they mm. will not react. They will you, you, you have a now, uh, now I have an example, a big platform as Airbnb, you know, for, to rent flat. Yes. Today, and actually there is a big lobbying from the hotel owners in France and as in all around the world. Today, when you want to rent a flat or an apartment when you're traveling, uh, forget to go your real estate agency uh, at the corner of the street. It's finished. Real, es real estate agent and franchise, by the way, because I used to work in France in franchise of real estate, which was named Orpi. So this kind of job will disappear, finished. <laughs> finished. This job, yeah, it's finished. These jobs, when you have platform now to put in touch clients and custom and service providers, it's finished. Real estate agent, if you are a real estate agent, you have to change your job. I mean, in Europe, in America. It's finished. Terminé, halos. Change your job. Disruptive innovation. Now, you can be in touch with someone. I was in Milano uh, this summer to the ex exhibition, universal exhibition. I rent a flat from Lebanon to Milano, uh, cheaper than a hotel, a very good location. Uh, finished. Finished. Our business always handmade something else. So you have to be aware. Yes. Conclusion. Conclusion. You, after we will have 15 minutes Q&A. Conclusion. Uh, you have to work on this, you know. I mean the operation manuals. It's very important when you want to create a franchise. Not necessary to make a 1,000 uh, pages, but uh, you need the minimum to enlighten the, the points that will be uh, transferred to the franchisee to enable him to forward and to apply you know how. So really, this module is very important. When you have to draft an operation manual, it's not the one-man uh, job, it's a team. I want to, to end up with that. You cannot say, okay, I will write uh, my operation manuals. Uh, you have to involve all the stakeholders to write your operation manuals, everybody. Because everybody on the franchising chain will tell you something important that you didn't see. So it's team, teamwork, a workshop. The most, to tell you just one minute, the most difficult thing is to make what we call the data collection. You tell me I want to franchise, okay. But the data collection, I mean, what are the tools and the processes that you are using now? And how can we organize them according to the structure of the books? But the data collection is a big thing. Because is this process mapping? Process, what do you mean? Process mapping, does you look at the organization? No, 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 no. no. We manage, no, no. we map all the processes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. And write all these. 
Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, this pro, you, know, procedure you know, you have to put all the ingredients on the table. You know, to draft operation, you put all the ingredients, it's an image for sure, on the table. The template you use to purchase order, to communicate with your future franchises, the processes, uh, blah, you put everything on the table and you start sorting. Book one, book two, this book three, book eight. Uh, book uh, eight, we have nothing. We have to create everything. You can add, <coughs> you can add uh, procedures, it's as operation management. You can add a book on uh, the IT system, computing. POS, POS inventory, uh, and uh, POS stock, uh, point of sales inventory. Yes, uh, with uh, many suppliers as Microsoft or whatever you want. Uh, but regarding the IT system, you have, to, you have to, to be trained, you have to train your people. Uh, it's very important now, computing, first of all, to keep in touch with your franchisor or franchisee. Mm. And also to, uh, to analyze your cost. Because you know that in FMB business, for instance, forget clothing or uh, accessories, but in FMB business, you have the food cost is uh, the red light, you know. And when you go higher than 30% of food cost, there is a big danger. So this kind of the food cost must be managed through uh, IT tool with reports. I mean, every day you have a report. You can have more than 200 kind of reports now with the system. But you have to follow it, to make it followed by your CFO, by uh, to, see, to look at the evolution of your um, food cost. Yeah. In reality, I found like, especially for food cost, it should be a combination of having a system in place and having a physical check regularly. Yeah, yes, for sure. Because you find that there is like Yes. You have your cost of sales ten percent, but in reality, the ways to theft you end up above thirty. So uh, the sooner you reconcile both. Uh, oh yes, you, you stress on very interesting uh, matter that in FMB business, one of the biggest issue is to manage waste. Yes, waste. For sure, you will agree you with me, Ahmad. Yes. But later on, yes. waste, on waste. Order, Waste when you when you work with fresh product. Yes, if you, if you if you no, but if you work with uh, frozen, if you work with with frozen is different, because frozen, you pick it from the. Mm, for sure, but but the, the big issue is the waste. I mean, at the end of the day, you close your restaurant, your, in the mall at ten o'clock or eleven. Uh, what about your windows? You, you, you throw half of your stock uh, at the garbage? <laughs> Waste management is a key issue in FMB. Huh? And for sure stock inventory because you have expiry date. You, know, you, yeah. buy, uh, you buy milk, you cannot keep it uh, one year in your, uh, in your storage. So indeed uh, the FMB business requires a lot of uh, expertise. You have to be very cautious, very picky. Uh, the worst also when you are, uh, it happened to me uh, before yesterday, you go to a restaurant, okay, I want that, oh no, it's a uh, shortage, we don't have. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Ahmad, it won't happen if I go to visit you? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, yes, the, the, the issue of shortage is, is crucial. Nothing worse. I want that. Oh, sorry, we, we are out of stock. We don't have. It's a very... Uh, it would be like also that experience. I would not recall the name, but I remember there was a few months ago a very good a new uh, restaurant opened in your park. It was soft launch. And imagine the soft launch, you expect that they invited people of to have 50% coverage. They were queuing in the door, numbers of people were invited. So when we were in, 
supposed to be that everything is organic. Whenever you order anything, this is not available. There are three items we have to change, and it was the first and my last one. This yeah, has there. finished. It was, and it was soft launch. So the way that you have something, if it's available or not. Um, if you ordered something also previously, the consistency also, which was uh, important. Yeah, yes. You, you know, you have big, big mistake in FMB that shortage, uh, inconsistency, uh, presentation. presentation, hygiene. Uh, okay, you cannot play. You know, it's not when you sell a paint of je paints of jeans or a jacket. You sell a jacket, you know. Uh, as soon as the jacket <laughs> is not spoiled, you buy it, you don't buy it. I make you a nice packaging and you take it and you leave. In FMB business, no. You are constantly under uh, representation. That's why it's a very uh, hard business. Seven days a week. Uh, and you're also depending on your supplier. Meaning, an example. A friend of mine is in Egypt, actually, is working in a famous chain of restaurants. He told me last time he wanted to take a specific uh, butter, I think Elevir, not anymore available in the Egyptian market. The, the, the distributor of this brand was out of stock. What can you do? It's not you, huh? You place your order on time. You have your stock decreasing of butter. You call your distributor, okay, send me uh, 100 uh, butter pack. Oh, no, we don't have any more. And perhaps it will be forbidden, the law is changing. This, this is a big problem. Why? Because your clients, they, are, they, they have the habit to eat with a certain kind of butter. You change the butter, you change the taste. So sometimes the worst, in this case, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You did your job. The distributor did not his job. He didn't have a stock in advance. And perhaps the law is changing. So you, you face big problems, really. In this, and you have all the time to think about, as I told you, what could uh, affect your business. Another example. Uh, it happened uh, three years ago. There was a big rise of the price of uh, milk product. I don't know if you remember. Three years ago, uh, because of the Chinese demand, uh, all the products with milk increased. In Lebanon, it was about 20%. Butter, milk, uh, creme fraiche, um, every product containing milk saw its price rising. It's a big problem. This is supply and demand, you know, this is uh, worldwide. It's not you, it's not Lebanon, it's not France, it's worldwide. But you know that milk in FMB business is the most uh, used uh, ingredient. When you have a restaurant, your first budget is milk milk or associated product, milk, yogurt, butter, uh, cream, uh, cheese. The first budget is milk. Price, milk's price is rising of 20%. What do you do? It can, sometimes 20%, it can be your margin. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> you have to think about all that, you know, before you you set up a franchise, and always, I repeat, to, to think to the worst. Think to the worst. Okay, now, just 10 minutes, Q&A. Let's go. Well, first of all, uh, I hope that you did enjoy this session. Any question, any remarks, any customization, any um, adaptation? Any innovation in the station? I can, huh? I can not put my tie. It can be innovation. I think it would be a good idea to give us the model or example. 
But example, you know, I have, uh, I have, uh, I mean, uh, structures, but you know, it's, there is not something uh, typical. Yes, because if you go on the website on the many things of America, you know, you have many things related to legislation of labor law and health law, health insurance, <laughs> nothing to do. Uh, in France also, you have specific laws and regulations. So, me, me, you know, I give you that. Believe me, if you follow, uh, for sure you have to be organized, you know. You have eight or nine books. It has to be organized, you know, as I did in the outline for the franchise toolkit. Okay, part one, part two, A, B, make something structured. Not uh, you put 50 pages uh, and you start and you finish here. No, no, you have to structure. Okay, the job description, you can structure. How to write a job description, how to write an uh, organigram. Uh, pros and cons and uh, danger, what do you have to stress, what you have to do, what you don't have to do, etc., etc. You have to structure, as I did with the outline, but believe me, if you keep this uh, structure, eight books, nine books, you know, it's common sense. This is not skyrocketing science, nothing uh, uh, unbelievable or uh, extraordinary, and no. Logic. I give you this book. This is operation manual. Normally, you will get most of the questions that you will have on your business, you will get it here. If the franchisee is asking you 10 questions and none of them are mentioned in the operation manual, it means that there is a problem. Q&A. Again. Be here tomorrow as well, so uh, thank you. Will be coming in. So, tomorrow, a very important session also how to sell your franchise. Interesting, huh? By the way, sell your franchise. Huh? So, we will see the different ways that you have to sell your franchise, which is very important also because you selling is most important by the end. Questions? Thank you. So, uh, I hope that you did enjoy this session. Always at your disposal for any questions. Uh, hope to Can see you. Get what? Can we get your yeah, yes, I have business card. I will give you. Uh, I think and I hope that you will benefit this training session. Uh, in order to accelerate and to facilitate for the entrepreneur, I mean the, the development of, of your business on the best way. For others, I hope that you will have a clearer idea of what is franchising. I mean, in two details, you know, and to, to better understand when you have potential franchisee or candidate to become franchisee, or to understand, you know, the spirit and the way how franchising business is working. Again, uh, any questions? Think, have a look at the franchise toolkit. Okay? Have a look at it. At least look at the outline. Tomorrow, any question, you ask me. Nicola, what about this? What about that? And it will be my great pleasure to answer to you. Moi, je me sens Merci beaucoup.